Hi everybody, it's Sam at Mix Up Craft. Thank you for watching my tutorial today. So I wanted to do a video that was that just had a focus on heat embossing. So as part of this series that I'm doing, which is focusing on me using my stamps and different ways to use them, as along with you know my embossing folders and stenciling and other bits and pieces, I thought I want to just do a video that is just about heat embossing. Now, heat embossing is what got me started on this journey, as people call it, within paper crafting. It was something my mum showed me, and I love it. And I always say I wish I do it more, but there's so many other wonderful things I enjoy as well. But it really makes me sad when I read on craft forums or people email me and say that they just can't do it. They get really frustrated. They've ruined their project, and you. You really shouldn't feel like that. It does come down to practice, but honestly, just by doing a couple of really, really simple things, you shouldn't have any problems at all. So for me, uh, I guess it's just getting those tools right and doing a few little tests beforehand. I would say that's quite a good thing as well. So this is what I want you to be able to achieve. Beautiful cards, very simple, but really, really stunning. So there's two kind of techniques in this. There's using the embossing powder to create this kind of metal look okay so that's by adding quite a few layers and then just getting a lovely kind of clean crisp image there's no little kind of bits anywhere else this paper actually has gold flakes kind of in it so that's what that is I'm going to show you all the different kind of surfaces that I've embossed on and just how you get those results and I'll talk you through the product and how I find it's best to use so these are some samples here and I will, have I will show actually the cards towards the end of this video. So first of all is using the acetate. So this is embossed. I'm using the same stamp by the way. It's from this one here. It's this sunflower stamp. I thought just for you to get a real fair kind of um, idea of how it works on different surfaces, I thought let's just stick with the same stamp. So here it is on that acetate. So this is heat heat resist acetate so you don't get any warping it's nice and flat there and this is perfect for making window you know decorating your window sheets your aperture kind of parts to your shaker cards and things like that it looks brilliant so this is using a beautiful orange like a tangerine embossing powder again I will link everything I use below but that's on acetate wonderful results then one of my favorites is vellum something about embossing on vellum also die cutting it's beautiful for flower effects and having lots of layers and texture to your cards, but it's also great for wrapping this around, you know, you can make lovely little kind of light lanterns. You can have a little battery operated candle inside and then you get that kind of effect coming through. So really lovely way to use the acetate, but also looks great as a shaker card still and just on your cards, you know, as it is. Then black, this is one that I see a lot of people get frustrated with because they say, you know, all little black bits, um, little bits of the white or whatever color you're using, embossing powder kind of stick to other parts. So again, I'm gonna show you tips on to how to get a really lovely crisp, white image on black cardstock then that's the same that's just using a creamy this is the sea foam one here that i've used but we'll talk through those in a moment this is on craft card gives a real kind of wedding shabby chic kind of look and then we've got some real fun ones here so this one is stamped onto holographic paper and it's a glitter embossing powder so there's loads of sparkle in the flower and then there's that real kind of cool psychedelic shine with the holographic card in the background so this is a you know a real shiny non-porous surface but you can still get fantastic results and you'll be able to see that along the way and then using mirrored cardstock again here love that gold on gold just think it looks awesome and I've done it there in the rose gold I also caught it while it was still warm with my finger now okay I didn't burn myself luckily because it's plastic embossing powder is just finely finely ground plastic so when it's heat sets it forms its plastic form again so you don't really want to be getting this on your skin but I thought I'd leave it in just so you can see what happens and um, you know that this does happen as well so you do need to be careful don't touch it initially and then this one again is one of my favorites this is using a platinum colored embossing powder on a glittered non-shed background so this is a glitter background and I think that looks absolutely stunning. You can imagine that on a lovely anniversary card. And uh, yeah, really, really pleased with the results. So these are a couple of the cards that I've done. Just, you know, again, kept that sunflower stamp throughout just so you can see. This is a real nice green on green. And this is, again is a pearlized cardstock. And then that was that one there that I showed you before. Okay, so first of all, I wanna show you 
how you want to prep your card and this is what you will do whether you're using vellum, acetate, whatever surface it is you need to prepare it. So I'm going to use also a couple of different weights here so I'm going to start off with just simple kind of cardstock. I am using a pearlized one so I've got a pearlized 120 paper more so and then this one here is a 240 cardstock. Okay, the reason I'm using two different weights because I want you to see about the warping because one thing I will say is that I had a pink embossing heat gun and I found that I got a lot of warping with that heat gun and it wasn't until I started using this one here, now this is a stamping up one, and I found that although it has the same kind of power in terms of, you know, the, the I guess, how fast the heat comes out, it doesn't, it's not as intense, but it still gets great results. And I find that I don't get the warping that I used to get. So obviously I know it's hard for people to be able to go out and, you know, change heat guns. I'm not saying that, but certainly look at your settings. So what went on then? I've got one and two on this, but maybe if you've got something and you're always putting it on a high power, maybe think about dropping it down and then using it because I think you might see a difference with the warping kind of aspect to the cards. So just have a play around with that. Okay, so we'll touch on that again a little bit more in the, in a moment. Now, you need to, basically you want to remove any kind of static from your surface that you're using. Now, the best way to use that is by using an anti-static. I've got this little, what they call the anti-static buddy, and it's basically a little pillow filled with, well, it's going to be something like a cornflower, something like that, and people do make their own. I've seen people have that, have got an old sock, and they filled it with cornflower, and they use that on their projects. Um, so I've also seen people use dryer sheets. Okay, so you don't always have to go out and buy the, the latest thing, but what I would say is this one here, I think I paid $2.99 and I had it probably now about three, maybe even four years. So they do last a very, very long time. So it's entirely up to you, but you will need one of these. Now we will start with, let's start with this one here. So I just like to kind of dab it first so you get all of the kind of powder coming out. You can see it all there. And this will brush off. And also you can apply a very, very, very damp, <laughs> almost dry cloth over your project at the end. And it will just kind of, I guess, bring that vibrant colour back out again that may have gone when you rubbed it with this. So you want to cover your whole area. Okay. I've cut all of mine to the width of five, but the length is eight and a quarter. I think it's just um, the A4 length. Now I'm covering all of it there, I'm trying not to uh, crease your paper, and then I'm just going to bring in some copy paper. And what I would say first of all is test your sheet. So I'm going to grab here, I've got this Paper Mania, paper Mania Silver Embossing Powder, and I'm going to just tip it over the paper and then let it shake off. And if any of it sticks, then you know that there is an area that might have a bit of grease on it, it might have some glue that maybe it caught on something in your craft room. You, you want to make sure you're rubbing that all off. So although it's an anti-static, it's not just about the static, it's about removing grease and anything sticky. You want your powder to be able to run freely from your paper and only stick to wherever it is that you would have applied your watermark. Okay, so that is a good little kind of test first, is just tip your embossing powder on, and if it doesn't stick, then you know your paper is ready. Okay, so I'm just going to dump this all back into my pot. Okay, so this is all now prepped and I've just got my stamp there. And then you want a, a watermark pad, okay? So this is a watermark stamp pad by Versamark. This is the one that I've pretty much always had, but I do also have this one here, which is the emboss, embossing stamp pad. And I've got my name on the back there. You know, there's lots of kind of different ones out there but also I've seen people use Vaseline basically what Versamark is is it's a it's gonna be it's, it's a watermark so it will stamp whatever it is that you have onto your cardstock and then it will be a sticky area for your embossing powder to stick to embossing powder will melt even if you don't stick it but obviously as soon as you apply heat the embossing powder will blow away so the Versamark is there to keep it in place for it to melt but if you were to well, I wouldn't do it in this plastic because the plastic would melt, but if you were to tip that maybe onto that metal lid, if I just tip that in there and kind of contained it, it would melt. So it doesn't need this to melt, but you do need it obviously to stop it blowing away. So I think sometimes people think that this is what this and this together, it kind of, you know, works to melt. It doesn't. That will melt without this, but this is what you need to create your lovely stamped images. 
I hope that makes sense. I'm just like I said, trying to cover everything. So I'm just going to ink this up. Now you do want to make sure that your pad is nice and juicy. You can get refills for these. You will start to see a difference if they're not, okay? So I'm going to stamp this right in the center, like so. And then, now I don't know how well this is picking up. It will pick up better on the black one. You can just about see it, but when it catches on the light, you can see, there we go. Okay, you can see my flower. But now I'm just going to go over this and start covering the whole piece because like I said, I do want to make cards out of all of these at the end. And I'm just going to go over it. Now, if you touch in any areas, what I sometimes do is I add some powder to my fingers or just rub my finger on that pouch. Okay, that will also take any grease, any natural oils that you have in your hand. You don't want them going on the paper. So now I can touch this paper and I'm not going to transfer, you know, like I said, you might have hand cream on, all those kind of things, moisturizers, they will attract this embossing powder. And it's that that we, we don't want. We want it to just stick on this beautiful image. So I'm going to just cover this whole kind of area here, just as you would any other stamp. Just treat it just as you would stamping with a normal ink. This time though, you've got this obviously watermarked kind of finish. So it can be a little bit tricky to see on lighter paper like this, but you will see it much better on my other examples. Okay, so I've covered that. Next is the fun stuff. So I'm now gonna dump this out because I've got my copy paper underneath. I'm just going to dump the whole thing. It might stick to a little bit where I've kind of overlapped my image, but um, that's okay. And then I'm just going to carefully lift up a corner and then start to move it around. So I can see there there's none in that corner, so I can kind of use that to hold the card and just kind of roll it all over. And I can already see that that has stuck to everywhere apart from the background, it's stuck to all of the flowers. Now, if you do see, I, I literally don't have any because you really, if you really cover that, and this is the thing I can't stress enough, you really do douse this with the powder, you shouldn't ever have any problems with heat embossing. It's the warping that will be another thing, which I'll talk about in a moment. But just, you know, tap the back there just to make sure that there is nothing where it shouldn't be. But I don't even need to, but if, like I said, if you do want to get anything off, very, very small paintbrush, even cut maybe a bigger paintbrush that you don't really use, just so you've got a few bristles. And you can just go in and move any off and then just kind of gently blow on it. Okay, you don't want any moisture from your kind of mouth coming out, but just very carefully. But, I mean, I'm kind of making it up because there isn't any to show you, but that is now ready to heat set. Okay, so before you get your heat gun going, make sure you put your uh, powders all away. I have done before, put my heat tool on and I've moved and my powder's just gone boom, and kind of <laughs> gone everywhere. You don't really want that to happen. Now, I probably could put another one there, but I just will work more with that bit when I go to do my card. So I know with this one here that I can have it on two and it's fine for, you know, pretty much anything that I heat emboss. But if you do have settings, sometimes we forget that there is the set in there, we just automatically put it on. But do have a look and do check and do, do play around because you may see quite a difference with your warping. Now I'm using a paper here, so I'm going to put mine on one because this works very well on a heavier weight cardstock. But I just want to kind of, for myself, have a look as well, but also show you the difference in warping between this one and this one, because this is more of a paper. So what you want to do is turn on your heat tool and leave it, obviously don't, you know, make sure it's not aimed at anything, but just hold it up away from you for a good 30 seconds, even 45 seconds, you want it to be so warm. And I think sometimes when we watch demos, obviously they're doing it for TV and they've got the clock against them. You might see them just going into it straight away and they're holding that heat on that card for such a long time. And it's that unnecessary heat that will create more warping. You literally want this to be so hot and ready that as soon as it touches that paper, that embossing powder will melt and you're moving it straight on. So if anything, it's just touching the embossing powder and not really touching your card stock or paper and that's great that's what we want because we don't want that warping okay but if the warping does happen I will tell, tell you and show you some ways that you can help that anyway so I'm going to let this go on I'm going to turn the volume off and you'll be able to see what I do
Okay, so while that's warm, I'm just going to hold it, but you don't want to put your hand on it instantly because you do this will dry almost instant but don't put your hand on it straight away because it might come off but just hold it down flat but now that is a paper that has just had an intense heat on it and the warping is minimal that is going to be very easy to add some double-sided tape or wet glue and stick down to your project or wrap around something but the results are perfect okay so you will have noticed in that quick little because I would have you know didn't want you listening to the sound of the the heat gun but as soon as it catches, move the heat and keep it moving in a circular motion. It's Like I say, if you were to just test and just hold that heat and just leave it on your cardstock, moving it very slowly, it will either start to go brown where it's gonna catch and actually set a light, or it's just going to warp terribly. So, but that there is almost lying flat and that's a paper. So by applying that same technique, onto a thicker cardstock, you should almost have no warping and you can see that in my samples. My samples are pretty flat and um, you know, look at that thick, beautiful glitter card there. It's just got a slight arch on it. So, you know, some cardstocks even come like that. Again, with the rose gold there, that's, no, that's pretty much no different to my cardstock. And even down to the slightly thinner black one here, I mean, that's, wow, that's, Perfect. So this, you know, it's not going to have any problem sticking to anything, and the vellum is just, again, really, really good. Okay, so I'm going to now, on high speed, I'm going to, again, I'm going to now prep this one exactly the same way, really rubbing it over my surface, put a bit on my fingers again, and um, and get this all stamped up, and then we'll heat set that again exactly the same way, just to give you a comparison. Okay, this one here I'm using the Wow Opaque Bright White Super Fine. This is a beautiful embossing powder. And again, I'm going to go over this one. I think the white's going to look beautiful against this turquoise colour. I am almost out, so I will uh, have to go a bit careful with this. But you'd be surprised how long embossing powders last and how you know far they will go. But look at that. Oh, held the wrong end there. Let's put a little bit on the end there. Again, tap off all that excess. Okay, so you can see here, that's where I put my thumb. You see I've got a little bit there. Just rub that off. And again there, that's where I've touched it with my finger. But everywhere else, all in here, there are no white bits. Now, when you're using something that's a bit darker, so that was quite light really in terms of colour, you're not really going to notice if there's any extra specks, but something like this that's got a bit more of a darker tone. People like to heat set underneath. Now, I don't, I, sometimes I think, yeah, do it, and other times I think not. The reason why I'm more, not against it, but I don't do it, is because you are applying so much heat to the cardstock before it even gets to the plastic, to the embossing powder. I prefer just letting my heat gun get really, really hot and then just blasting it straight on top. But there is that slight risk of it blowing off the odd little piece that then might land somewhere else and then set. Now, what I would say if that happens, what I tend to do is I use my little pin on the end of my pokey tool and I just carefully scratch it off. That's if that happens. But if you tap it enough and make sure you've got that excess all off, you shouldn't have any flying around. It should have already dropped off. So yeah, it's, again, anybody new to this, just play around a lot first and kind of find what works for you. I've been doing this a long time and this this is just, it, it always works. So I'm just going over the same way I did before, just being very careful not to touch the image, but get off any loose pieces. So again, I'm just gonna pop my powder away. Now I know some people, they have a tub for all their kind of loose pieces and they have like a beautiful kind of embossing mix of just all kinds of stuff. So you can, you know, do that as well. Okay, so I'm now gonna heat set this one exactly the same way again. Okay, so there's that now done. It's still warm, but I'm just kind of, just push it down there, make sure you don't go over the last piece you've kind of added the heat to, but it's nice and cold over here. But look, it's it's pretty much flat. 
there's very, very, very slight warping. So, you know, there's your lightweight paper. This is my thicker cardstock. So you can see there, you can definitely see more warping with the paper, but because it's lighter, it's still very easy to use. So yes, you can use, you know, any, any surfaces that you want there. So now you can see also there's a little bit of white that's gone there. So I can just get this here and just very carefully just rub it off like so. Okay, but that is a beautiful background now for a card. It looks absolutely stunning. Okay, so that's cardstock. The cardstock I'm using as well is this card that was given to me from the paper box. So they sent me these great swatches with all the names on everything and the weight. So when I go to order the cardstock, I can just flick through these, which is brilliant. I'll link their website below, but I've got here, that was the pearlescent paper. So it was 125, oh sorry, the purple, yeah, 120 was the purple pearl. And then this is the beautiful um, cardstock here. So actually they're slightly different. Oh, this is 290, not 250. So even thick, I did think actually it felt very, very thick. Yeah, turquoise pearl card was the one I used, 290 GSM, beautiful cardstock, okay. Right, let's do the acetates. I think there's gonna be quite a few people interested to see that one. So I've got my heat acetate here. Now, I use the Crafters Companion heat resist um, acetate, but I must admit, I kind of got it mixed up with my normal acetate. So what I would say, if that happens, is just get it with your heat gun and just blast the corner. And if it, you'll know if it's not, because it just literally kind of just goes bleh, and just all melts and yeah, it just turns almost to like liquid plastic. So be careful, but that's the easiest way to test it. I do find as well that the heat resist acetate has a slightly, I guess, cloudy look to it. It's not as clear. It's the easiest way to, to explain it there. So this is a piece here. It's gonna be enough for me to make a shaker window out of that. So exactly the same way, oh, about to rub that on there, you will apply your powder just as you would paper, okay? Now, I don't know whether this is gonna cause any kind of abrasion. It's very, very soft powder, so it shouldn't do. But by all means, you know, if you are making your own, then do check that because the last thing you want to do is scratch your plastic. Now I'm doing both sides on this because you will be surprised where this powder can go. It can turn up everywhere. So you don't want it sticking to the underside. So I'm actually gonna bring in a fresh piece of copy paper here as well. And just go over that again, okay? For this one, I'm going to use a black embossing powder because I think it will show up really well. Most of the embossing powders I have are the wow ones. I've got a lot of these. And I've also decanted some of them into this overflow one here. And I should have a black, fine black, that's silver black embossing powder. I do need to get some of these filled up. That's a nice one as well, black sparkle. We'll go with the simple blacks. So I think it'll look quite nice. There's also the clear embossing powder, which you can get great effects with. So if you don't have, you don't have to have all the colors of embossing powder. If you just buy clear and use your colored inks, it will look like you've got colored embossing powder. So that's a good one, but I'm not gonna to touch on that today, but there's also the sticky embossing powder, which is great for foiling as well. But today is just about standard, simple kind of embossing, heat embossing. Okay, so I'm gonna ink this up the same way. Now, now because this is a shiny surface, it's non-porous surface, so literally whatever you put on it is just gonna sit on the top rather than seep in. You might find it easier to use a stamping platform. But that might take a bit more time, which is why I like to just use my clear block, okay? But what you will get with the stamping platform is it will push the, the, the watermark onto the surface and there is no risk of it shifting. Whereas with this, that you do have that risk. But if I just show you what I do, so that's all prepared. And I'm just gonna very carefully drop it down and let go. And then just tap it, just to make sure that it all kind of you know, does print, okay? And then hold the acetate and then very carefully lift it off. Okay, again, this is gonna be hard for me to show you. Bring it up, you can just about make out the, there we go, you can just kind of see it. So it is there, you will be able to see it much, much better in real life. It's just not picking it great on the camera, so don't worry if you're thinking there's no way I'm gonna see it, you will, promise you now, I can see that as clear as day. Okay, because it does catch in the light. So I'm gonna cover my acetate exactly the same way. 
So each time, just kind of hovering it over, placing it down, let go, and then just tap it. Okay, and then hold and lift it off. The reason I say to hold and lift it is because if you just lift it up, it might slide. So at least if you're holding it down, it's just it's going to pull straight off. Okay, so I'm going to get this covered. Okay, so I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to bring in this black because, like I said, it's going to be very easy for you guys to see it. And I'm just going to cover. And this is a real soot black. It's it's lovely. Dump that all out on there and then carefully see. Once you start to lift up the acetate, you'll be able to see where it's not quite stuck. Bring it over and again, tap it. As soon as you tap, it will drop off. Because when you sometimes pick the um, acetate up, there is black stuck everywhere, but it just needs tapping. Now I've got a few bits here. I don't know how well that's coming just there. See that little area? That shouldn't be there. I'm just gonna brush that off. And I'll show you quickly another great technique using, well, you can use it again on any surface, but it does look good on acetate. But other than that, and a little bit there, which I think I caught with my finger, that is just on the stamped image and nowhere else. So I'm just going to clear all this away. And again, I'm going to get this heat set. Okay, it might take a, a few seconds longer to set on this because it's plastic on plastic, but look at the results. Fantastic, really, really good. And then what you can do now is when you're, you know, that's completely cooled down, is wipe it over with a wet cloth, or even put it in the water. It will not come off and it will come up lovely and clean. And that's a lovely now kind of window sheet or just a lovely effect on something, you know, that you're going to be making. So again, I just used it exactly the same way. It's nice and hot and use circular motion, motions and just, you know, you can watch it kind of melt because it goes shiny from that matte powder that it starts off with. And you will know if it's not heat resist, it will not stay like this. It will completely just fall apart. And again, the warping is minimal. You know, once you've got your kind of frame on this and you stick it into, you know, onto a card and stuff, it's going to work great. Another quick thing I'll show you with the acetate, use this piece here is if you just, um, you don't even now need to add, if you're covering a whole surface with embossing powder, you, you don't need to prep it with your anti-static because you're just covering the whole area anyway, so it doesn't matter. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm just literally gonna brush this over this acetate here, just to create, let's get rid of that bit there. Bring in a fresh piece of copy paper here just because I don't wanna get any powder on my pad. And I'm just going to swipe it across like so. And I can see there, yeah. And then I'm going to use my gold because I think this will show up really. Actually, let's use silver because I haven't done much with the silver. And just kind of let it just cover. And can you kind of see where it's got those like little markings there and stuff? That's what I want. I'm just going to pop this back in my jar and then I'm going to get that heat set. Okay, now if I bring that up, look at the look at that awesome effect. You get all that grain detail. This would look so good for different things, especially like a mixed media kind of thing. But also, if you just want to do a, a background, how lovely is that? And then you've got room here to stamp. You could use your stays on inks and stamp directly onto your embossing powder that way. But it's, you know, you, you don't always have to have a stamp. You can just use the pad itself. And I think you get really, really good results. Okay, so I'll give you examples there on acetate and on cardstock. It's exactly the same when you use a mirrored cardstock because that has a surface just like, you know, your acetate is non-porous, so the, the, the watermark there is just going to sit on top. So that I don't think we need to show you. Let me show you the vellum because I think that's quite fun. And the glitter cardstock, again, I don't think you really need to see that one because it will work exactly the same way, but vellum is again really really lovely to use but what I will do as well is I mean I don't know how sticky that's going to be but let's use let's use this lovely lilac here and I'm just going to put it on first and test the area okay like I said before okay can you see there where it's stuck how oh, well that's showing up hopefully this will pick up 
but there is some purple stuck here. That's why it's good to do the test first. There's also some catching there. So what I then will do is pop this back into its little jar. And then I'll go over it and kind of really work in those areas. But everything else was fine. Didn't really stick anywhere else, but just go over it. So uh, that's probably my top tip is test your cardstock first before and after so now I've stuck that so now I've just covered that I can then tip it all over again can you see just how freely it moves it doesn't stick anywhere and that's what you want that is completely clear of anything okay even if you thought it was before it definitely is now so that is ready for me to stamp Okay, and that's the vellum. It's still a bit warm, but again, once you're happy, that was the last one that I just heat set. Just keep it, you know, you can put it in between something on a book or something like that, but that's not that warped that you can't use that. That's going to be perfect for, for using, you know, sticking down, putting in your junk journals, art journals, all kinds of things. It looks brilliant, and I love it on the vellum. It looks really wet. It looks, it's just such a great effect. Okay, so that's that way. Then I just wanted to quickly show you before I start putting all the cards together how to create this kind of metal look. It's really, really easy, really, really fun to do. Okay, so I've just ran through the hello again that I've used on these cards here. Okay, and that's from the Bright Roses Sentiment Words die set. Now, I some of you that have followed me for quite a long time would have probably seen me touch on this in other tutorials because I can't remember if I have done one just on this alone I don't think I have I will have a look back and if I have I'll link it in so this is just a really really nice way to bring texture to your cards and it is that faux metal I guess technique that they call it so I've got my die cut image you can do this on any image I understand that that's white on white but in a minute you, you're going to see it anyway and then using your pad you just want to just cover the whole thing with the with the watermark okay like so so you don't need to use your embossing buddy if you want to be really detailed and maybe just do certain sections like you might want to do this end purple then I would use your anti-static buddy on this side so that then the powder will just all slide off but otherwise um, I'm just covering the whole thing. I'm also just going to go over it there because it didn't look like it would it had covered it. There we go. And then what I would say is flick your paper over and then sprinkle your powder on this side. So let's do a silver again because I've done gold on those cards so I'm going to do silver on this one. So I'm just going to cover the whole thing. Now also when you're holding it, it can get quite warm, so I've just got my tweezers here, but I very rarely use tweezers, I just work from one end and then I turn it around, so I'm going to use them just to kind of lift this out so I don't get my hands completely covered, and just again tap off that excess, like so. Now this time I don't want to keep dumping it back into my tub, I, I did used to have them in big kind of lunch boxes but I don't I love embossing heat embossing but I don't use it every single day which I know some people do so it just took up too much space so that's why I kind of decanted them down and put them into smaller things so I'm just quite happy doing it this way so I'm just going to step I'm just going to pop that to one side because I'm going to be just pushing it in that each time so this one's all about you're going to add lots of layers. Three layers is what I tend to do. Some people do more, some people just do two, but you certainly want more than the one layer. So what I'm going to do is heat set this again. Always make sure this is really, really hot. Doesn't matter what you're doing. Always leave it on fresh for about 30 seconds, 45 seconds, something like that. Okay. So that has got its first layer of silver embossing powder on. Now you'll notice it's got quite a mottled, maybe like a hammered metal look, and that's perfectly fine, you know. But if you want to get that smoother, more of a molten kind of um, metal look, 
then that's when you want to start adding some more layers. So I'm going to bring in this second piece here and you're just going to repeat it. Now you can, if it's warm enough and you're very, very, and you act very quick, as soon as you blast it with heat right along it and you can stick it straight back into the powder because it will still be kind of warm, but I don't tend to get the best results when I do that. I prefer letting it cool and then just doing a separate layer in between. So again, I'm going to just cover this with the Versamark. Okay, and then this time I'm just going to kind of push it underneath because it's such a little delicate um, sentiment. Again, tap off your excess. And I can see it's covered everywhere, but can you see this end here still catching in the light? Obviously didn't get Versamark on it. Don't go back in with the Versamark at this point because all you're going to do is get all this loose powder onto your pad. You don't want that. Heat set it and you can just go over it again. So now I'm going to blast this again with my heat gum. Okay, so now that's with two layers and you'll notice you start to get more of a smoother kind of finish. So this area here is really smooth. It's a little bit of kind of dimpling there and there. But now the next layer we put on again will smooth that out even more. And like I said, if you do want to do four, even five layers, it will become very dimensional. And once it's kind of on your project, will look like a real kind of metal embellishment. So again, I'm going to repeat this now another time. Okay, and now you've got this thick, lovely die cut sentiment. Such a lovely effect, it really is. And because this is so like kind of delicate, I'm just holding it quite straight there just while it kind of cools down and that will stay nice and flat. And that is just how I got these effects here. So you can see it in the gold and you can also see it there in that green. Okay, so here are all my lovely samples. So I'm now gonna make some cards and then I'll come back and show you what I've done. Okay, so I've got a few cards here to show you. I haven't done everything yet, but I will post pictures as and when. So that's the finished purple one. So that's that um, lovely metal look that you saw me create. And I think it looks, yeah, really, really effective. And then that was the original one. And I just put a sheet of vellum behind there just to help that really pop and stuck that piece just directly over that piece. The green just on the white there, really nice. This is my thank you one, love that one. So I just die cut an oval, kind of like an aperture there and then put that on foam. And then I heat emboss the thank you in the back there. Then this one here I really like. So I've done, I kind of loosely done the eclipse technique. I didn't do the same paper on the happy and the birthday. I just used the glitter, but really, really sparkly. I'm probably gonna add a bow and some few other bits to that as and when. Just in a really kind of simple one there, more like a sketch challenge kind of card that one is, but I just wanted to show off that nice strip of it and I've got another piece still left, so I'll probably do another one the same. And then that one I've started to do, so that's the black. And I've got this little border trim and again I'll do a nice little sentiment and something in the middle. Sometimes I, I do this, I just have lots of cards kind of ready like the base is done and then I just need to add the sentiments and a little bit of decoration. Started this one, this will be a wedding card. I've just done these strips here because I've put a thin strip of double sided tape underneath the vellum and you generally see that so I've put this strip of craft card over it on each side. Probably gonna have some bunting hanging here and then on your wedding day, something like that. I've done it as a top folding one, so I think that'll look nice. And then that was the other piece of acetate. So I was gonna do a shaker, but as soon as you put kind of shaker parts in it, that match or kind of complement it, they kind of got lost. So I just thought, you know, I'm just gonna put it against that white and it's got real nice texture to it. And then I'll put a nice sentiment over that as well. Okay, so that's the cards, just to give you a bit of inspiration. And then I'll just do a quick recap really on the embossing powders. So the main ones that I have are Paper Mania, Wow and Nouveau. I do have some more of the Nouveau ones, but they were kind of like more of the first kind of ones that I brought and um, so that a lot of them have gone. So I'm gonna call this part one 
and maybe in a couple of weeks I'll follow with part two and within that one I think I'm going to go into more even more things that you can do and the different other kinds of embossing powders so for example I touched on the sticky embossing powder and this is great for using with foils um, and lots of other things so I think I'm going to do a tutorial with this one and also using the ultra high embossing powders so these ones here can you see they've got a really thick grain okay and there's some really fun things that you can do with those um what other one and then just to really show you i would say if you're starting off and you don't really know what colors to get get a gold get a silver they're going to be your kind of you know the ones that you go to all the time and will match pretty much everything and then get a white white's really good to do and again you can do great the emboss resist technique with white looks really really nice and also clear so there's my clear embossing powder and there's so many great techniques that you can do with this one and then like I said I've got my wow I found my other one here this is my opaque bright so I can just dump the rest of that one into here and then slowly over time, some of this has come from kits that I've got. I purchased that one there, that's beautiful, that's the Salsa. That's the one that I showed on the holographic. Really lovely, I mean, oh, it's just absolutely gorgeous. Look great on a mermaid's tail. Um, but the super fine ones, if you can get those, they're great for, you just get, if you've got a detailed stamped image or something like that, you're just, with the super fine, it's gonna be able to grab onto all those real detailed pieces and hopefully you'll get a beautiful image. And then I've just got nice ones, like I said, through kits and stuff. That one there is the Raspberry Coulee. And then I've got the Champers. That's another beautiful one. And then there was that Platinum one, which is here. So, yeah, just slowly build them up. But definitely silver and gold and white. And then black, because the black looks great on white, as you can see. Oh, no. No, I'd done that on the acetate, wasn't it? That was the white on the black, which looks fantastic. So yeah, so that's it. I mean, like I said, I don't want to go too, too detailed. I just wanted to really touch on the basics and just highlight that. Hopefully you've picked up lots of good tips from me. And for anybody new, this has maybe helped you go for it and not be scared to do it. Because I know lots of people are like, no, I don't like doing it. I get it everywhere. And just take your time with it. Clear everything away. Have a nice clean workstation. And yeah, just play around. And at the end of the day, have fun with it. But um, just prep, 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 and then you can't go wrong. <laughs> okay, I'm going to go now. Hopefully you like the video. Please give me a thumbs up if you do. And subscribe to my channel so you get to see more. Thanks for watching. Bye.